Okay, so I've been playing around with USB boot on the Pi Zero 2W and uh, I've managed to get it to work. Uh, I don't know if it's beneficial, I don't know if it's going to be faster than using the ordinary SD card, but uh, let's start it up and see how quick it starts up. So it should be pretty quick uh, because the Pi Zero 2W I think starts in about 30 seconds anyway. And uh, as you can see here, the USB cable is plugged into this one, the one nearer to the HDMI. That's the only one that supplies data. The other HDMI, micro HDMI, is just power only. There you go. So it's starting up now from the SSD drive. And this is using a Ugreen SATA adapter. Let's make sure we get it back when the screen changes to the actual operating system. So we'll do it to when it comes up with the, the wallpaper, I guess. And there we are. Now I'm going to do some speed tests with a Samsung USB bar compared to the SD card, compared to the SSD drive. Uh, so just to show you that cabling again, so power is going in here into the micro USB. I'm using the official Raspberry Pi adapter with one of my USB-C to micro adapters. Uh, you can see the USB is looking a bit weird uh, on this Ugreen. That's because it's got a USB-A to micro adapter. It was one of these mini ones. Uh, it doesn't work with my USB hub. I can't get USB boot working with this hub. Uh, even though it did work with Windows 10, and I don't quite know why that worked. Uh, Windows 10, I didn't get the operating system running, but I did get the boot to start. Um, but uh, yeah, as you can see, all up and running. So normal mouse and keyboards don't work with this setup because uh, I'm taking up the only USB data port and it has to be plugged in with this little micro USB adapter with the SSD drive. I couldn't get any other way to work. So what I'm using to control this is a Bluetooth touchpad and keyboard. And I set this up with remote desktop uh, because obviously otherwise it would be quite tricky to pair all the Bluetooth and everything. Uh, I think what I'm gonna try and do is plug in this SD card and see if it comes up as removable storage uh, because I now have a spare slot there. That's pretty much the only other slot I've got. I might be able to do something with the GPIO pins. I'm not sure if you can add USB via those, but let's plug this SD card in and see what happens. Let's switch over to screen capture. Okay, so it's not shown up with an eject symbol, so I don't, I don't think it's recognized it as a drive. It has got Raspberry Pi OS on this, yeah, it's not showing up here, uh, which I would have expected it to. Um, but if I go into Raspberry Pi Imager, sometimes Imager finds things uh, if they're differently formatted. So Imager and choose OS. I still can't believe how fast this Pi Zero 2W is. Uh, if I hit Arrays and choose Storage, yeah, the SSD drive that I'm using is 60 gigs, so this is definitely the micro SD card that I plugged in. So I could write an image to that micro SD card, uh, but I can't, I can't eject it from here uh, because it's not showing up. So I'm going to have to unplug it with the system running. I'm not sure if it's going to show me any warnings. Uh, yes, it does. Well, I would have, I would have ejected it, but I couldn't. Uh, so if I pop in, I've got a 128 gig. Uh, another micro SD card. This has got data on it. This is my RetroPie mount one. As you can see, this shows up straight away. I've got an eject symbol here, uh, and let's just check that we can definitely access that drive. Yep, so that shows up, look, 128 gig ROM, and RetroPie mount, so if I double click on that, oh, that wasn't quite a double click, double click on that, uh, and then ROMs, you can see that that's working absolutely fine. I always click on the ROMs folder, and there's loads of folders and files in there, so it takes a little bit longer to open. Uh, so that's interesting. We have access to the SD card slot when we're using USB boot. What I need to do now is eject that one and I'm going to do a speed test on this SSD drive. So I click on that and it's really hard with this little trackpad. There we go. Oh, fail to eject. Oh, well, never mind. Let's just unplug it anyway. And let's do a speed test. Uh, now, the weird thing about this is that this is a USB 3 cable with a nice, uh, reasonably fast SSD drive, but I'm using USB 2 because that's all the zero has got. But I just wanted to see if it was going to be faster on this than an SD card and also the Samsung bar. The Samsung bar isn't as fast as the SSD drive, but I thought I'd throw it in the mix just to give it a try. Uh, so run tests. And I usually do this three times and pick the best result. Oh, and it's come up with a pass. I'll take that. Right, so. Show log, sequential write speed, 34,675, 
1782332. Yeah, so um, certainly not the speeds we're used to on a Pi 4 with USB 3, obviously. Uh, right, let's right click that and copy on this tiny little trackpad. It works all right to be fair. And let's do another test and run test, see if it gets any faster. So which one am I going to keep? Uh, 3732, oh, the last one's the better one. So you can SSD zero, let's save that. And let's shut down. And we'll unplug the USB drive and uh, we'll boot off the micro SD. So this is 128 gig. One of the maker disk ones that I got sent. Uh, I think I'm gonna use ordinary mouse and keyboard with this just because it's easier. So this adapter is the official USB-C one. Going into the on the go adapter, I can then pop this adapter on the end to make it micro USB. And I can plug my ordinary mouse and keyboard in just because it's easier than using the Bluetooth one. So let's pop that into the second port, this one here, not the one on the end because that's only power. Pop this here and let's switch on and do a startup test. Now there's a possibility this could end up being quicker and that's because I think it looks for SD card first. Uh, and so part of the USB delay may be that it's trying to boot from an SD card. Uh, so we'll see what happens anywhere with the timer on the screen. Okay, so definitely the micro SD card booted faster, but I suspect this is more to do with how it's treated as a boot device as opposed to how quick it is. Okay, so I've done the three speed tests on the micro SD card and this was the fastest of all the tests. Uh, so 17250, which is much slower than the sequential write speed of the Yukon uh, SSD drive and the random write speed 730 compared to 3200 and the random read speed 2166 compared to 2423. So definitely the SSD is still faster than a micro SD card. Now I'm just going to check because I haven't got a speed test on record for uh, this on a Pi 4. So I'm going to do a comparison and see if this is quicker on a Pi 4 just out of interest. And the great thing about this is you can just swap it over. So I can take the SD card out of here and pop it into this Pi 4 4 gig and switch on. Okay, so the boot test was interesting. Uh, 27.55 for the 02W, 32.5 for the Pi 4. So the 02W appears to be quicker than my Pi 4 from an SD card on boot. But let's compare the uh, speed tests. So I've done the three speed tests. So the best of the three is, I'm gonna go with the middle one. They're, they're all actually pretty similar, uh, but let's go with the middle one and compare to the test we had earlier on. So you can see SD card, yeah, is much quicker in the Pi 4, 31,118 compared to 17,250. Uh, random write speed 914 compared to 730 and random read speed 3010 compared to 2166. So definitely the SD card works better in the Pi 4 as an operating system. Um, but I can't really explain the boot thing unless there's more complicated things going on with the Pi 4 when it boots or if it's because I last had it in a Pi 02W and now I've changed it over to different architecture. So maybe Let's do one more boot up test and see if that makes a difference. So same again, SD card test on the Pi 4 4 gig. Okay, so pretty much same results. The Pi 02W uh, is definitely booting quicker from the SD card uh, than the Pi 4, not by a lot. And the Pi 4 is obviously much quicker running an operating system from an SD card because it had a lot better speeds. Okay, so I'm back on my Pi 4 8 gig. I'm running Twister OS from the SSD drive, and I'm just gonna clone this SD card, which is the one I've been using for the tests. I also cloned this onto this drive. What was interesting was this is a 128 drive, and I cloned it onto this 60 gig drive. Now, I thought SD card copier didn't do that. I thought it had a problem. You had to use a bigger drive or same size drive, but it worked. And I'm also gonna plug in my Samsung bar. This is 128 gig. Samsung bar, these are excellent. Really compatible and nice speeds for running an operating system from. Right, let's switch over to screen capture. Okay, so let's start up SD card copier. I've got other videos on how to back up SD cards and compress and things like that, but I just wanna do a straightforward copy. So SD copier, 
copy from device. Uh, well, this is the 128 gig micro SD card copy to device. Handily, it comes up with Samsung flash drive, so I know exactly which drive. Sometimes it's a bit confusing as to which drive is which, so you've got to be really careful on this point. Right, hit start, and yes, and that's going to start flashing that operating system over to the USB stick. As I say, I'm only doing this because it's easier, because it's all set up for remote desktop and everything. But if you wanted to do this, uh, because of the lack of any extra USB sockets, if you're using USB boot, obviously the gain, as we've just seen, is from a much faster operating system because the storage is a lot quicker on an SSD drive, and I think it's going to prove on a USB stick in a minute. But because you don't have any extra USB sockets, you can't plug in a mouse and keyboard. So you need remote desktop. So this video explains how to set up remote desktop uh, in a headless mode. So you can basically uh, set up your Pi, and then straight away you can pick up uh, an iPad, an Android phone, a MacBook, a Windows computer, and you can control your Pi headless. Uh, and then you can set up your Bluetooth mouse and keyboard. Uh, so that's the state that I need to get it to so I can do all these tests. And you may have noticed that I was using USB 2, which is going to take longer. Um, but because I'm using the main operating system on the USB 3 socket, I didn't want to plug another drive into USB 3 uh, because I've, I've got a total of three drives connected and my mouse keyboard to my 8 gig Pi 4 and it's just too much juice. You'll, you'll find that your operating system will crash unless you use a powered USB hub. Okay, so copy complete. I need to eject that now, uh, just the Samsung bar, which I guess will be this one, and take that out of here, and pop this adapter in. You've got to get it the right way around, so it's this way around, so it reads the USB connection, and this transforms it into a micro SD device. And so I need to pop that into the data socket, pop the USB-C cable into the micro USB adapter to power it, you can see that's all plugged in. I just need an HDMI cable now and switch it on. And here's my Bluetooth keyboard going to work straight off because it's cloned from the other operating system. It didn't last time and it doesn't look like it's going to this time. So I've got no way of controlling this now because I can't plug in another USB device because this one's only power and this one's got the boot drive on it. So I need to get a remote desktop. So on my iPad. Uh, you can use any device with XRDP, uh, and again, that's all explained in that headless video. So I think it comes up as the 1301. Yeah, so connect and hit continue. Okay, so now I have control of the operating system. What I think is always weird about remote desktop is nothing happens on the actual screen itself. So if I move the mouse around on here and I click on something to launch, uh, you can see that it comes up on here, but it doesn't come up on that one. Anyway, I need the Bluetooth bit and add device, but before I do that, let's just start this keyboard in a pairing mode. So if I, I think I press and hold it for a bit and it goes into pairing, you can see it's flashing now. Put it near the Pi Zero and add device. It always finds loads of Bluetooth devices. I don't know what most of them are. My TV comes up and my Bose speaker comes up. So there's no keyboard there yet. I did have this before, so I'm going to hit cancel and go down to the bottom and click on remove. Because it's a cloned operating system, for some reason it doesn't retain it. So click on Bluetooth keyboard and remove. Click on it again. It's still flashing, so it should pick it up. And here we have Bluetooth devices. And hopefully, if I drag down, there you go, Bluetooth keyboard. Click on that, click on pair, pair and request, waiting for a response. Connected successfully, right. So, if we move in, so here's my little Bluetooth keyboard. Switch it up to here, and you can see the mouse pointer is going around, and if I launch something, I can go back into screen capture now and do the same three speed tests on this Samsung bar and let's come back when all those tests are done. I've been using this tiny trackpad and I just remembered I've got a Bluetooth mouse so I could pair it with that. Uh, this has got two Bluetooth modes but also a dongle so if you've got a USB socket just plug it in there um, but you can also pair it to two different Bluetooth devices at the same time. See what I mean about loads of Bluetooth devices? There it is, Bluetooth mouse 3.0, that's much better.
So after nine full tests, uh, because if you do a test and it fails, it tests it three times anyway, uh, but I did the same process three times, every time it failed, and it's weird because the sequential write speed was quite reasonable, 25,264. The random write speed was all right as well, 2,350, that's more than four times what it needs to be. Uh, but the random read speed was the one it failed on every single time. So 12.32 there, uh, you can see here 12.03, 12.37, 12.32, uh, which is just odd because the Samsung bar I found is a very compatible USB stick and on the Pi 4, it runs loads of things and generally beats SD cards by quite a margin. Uh, and I've got separate speed tests on that if you want to check them out. But uh, really the uh, the winner here has got to be the Yukon. Uh, that is, uh, if I go to this one. So the Yukon was 37,005 compared to, uh, well the bar was 25,000. Uh, the SD card was only 17,000. The random write speed was faster on the Yukon than anything else and the random read speed was faster than everything else, although the SD card did quite well on the random read speed. But uh, yeah, so there is an advantage to running an SSD with a Pi Zero, but obviously it depends what you're doing with it. It is a bit of a pain having no other USB sockets. I quite like the setup I've got with the USB hub, which I showed in my previous video, uh, where I can plug things in. I can have a gamepad plugged in, I can have two storage devices plugged in. I, I like the flexibility of that, so I don't know if I will be using it with an SSD drive, even though it's obviously gonna be quite a bit faster and feel snappier as an operating system. So depending on what you're using it for, this may be useful. But anyway, I hope all this helps. Uh, let me know what you get working with the USB stick. Post your speed test results in the comments. I'll be interested to see what, what sort of results we get. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.